No jointer, no problems. You don't have $500, $1,000 to spend on a jointer. I'm gonna show you a jig that can joint boards. It can also do tapering, a high fence, clamping capabilities, and much more. And it's easy to build. Let's go. All you need to build this awesome jig is a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood, two of these micro jig clamps, and a dovetail bit. Theirs, it works well, but any 14 degree dovetail bit will work. I'm gonna make this one four foot long. You can make it as long or as short as you want, but about three to four feet is best, depending on the length of board you typically joint or taper. First thing we're gonna do is set our table saw up to rip a piece of scrap plywood 10 inches. You just need a 10 inch wide piece. That's all you need, about three foot long. The main thing here is that you get a piece of straight plywood. In other words, it's not bent, bowed, or anything like that. I'm using three quarter inch sanded birch. You can use whatever kind you got as long as it's about three quarters of an inch thick. And we've got our plywood cut to size. I've made mine 10 inches by four feet long. Now the next thing we're gonna do is install a dovetail bit. This bit comes from Microjig and it works with their dovetail clamps and I use that on a ton of things in the shop. I'm gonna set this up at 3 8 inch deep cut because that's how deep you need to cut these. Then I'm gonna set the edge guide two inches from the center of the bit. If you don't have an edge guide, you can simply use a scrap piece of plywood to set up an edge guide so that this bit will run two inches from the edge of the board. You can double stick tape this, you can clamp it however you need to do it. All right, we cut those two long grooves. Now all we have to do is divide this up to cut our cross grooves. You're gonna measure off the end four inches on both ends. These don't have to be precise. You're not building a clock, you're building a jointing jig. So if it's close, it's fine. You're also gonna to wanna to make a mark right in the center. And for us, it's gonna be two feet or 24 inches. And then you'll also want to divide that in half again and make a mark at one foot and three feet. That's gonna be our grooves. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five grooves going across. This is a frame and square fence. You can put it on any frame and square and it basically takes it, makes it a giant speed square so you can do stuff just like this and just use it as a straight edge or right angle guide. That's what I'm gonna do. Next thing I'm gonna do is just mark one inch from each corner and then we're gonna cut these at a 45 degree angle. Basically just give this a little dog ear on each corner just to knock those sharp edges off. You don't have to do this. If you just wanna sand that around, you can, or just leave it like it is. And again, you're not building a clock, just get it close, it'll look fine. From there, I just take some sandpaper. You can use 120 grit or whatever you want. Just kinda, just knock the rough edges or any of those little splinters you may see in there because it's plywood. Just kinda smooth that up. It doesn't take much at all. The thing you're gonna do is take out that dovetail bit and put in a chamfer and or roundover bit if you want to kinda soften these edges up. If not, you can just take sandpaper and hit the edge of that right there just to knock that sharp edge off. But only do three sides. You're gonna do the two short sides and one long side. One long side, you're gonna leave at a sharp 90 degree angle for a purpose. Now take your sander, 120 grit's fine here. You're gonna sand the whole thing, front, back, upside down, everything. Then the next thing you wanna do is throw on some type of wax or my preference, Outlaws board butter. Throw that on the bottom of it, especially on the bottom. That's gonna help it slide on your table saw much easier. You can also put it on the top just to give it a little extra protection. We have our jig. Now we can joint boards, we can taper boards if we're making tapered legs, things like that. And we can use it as a high fence. The way this works is you're just gonna lay the board that you're gonna to want to joint. We're gonna do jointing first. Lay that right up there. First slide on your micro jig dovetail clamps. Lay the board that you are jointing on top and then just clamp it down, super simple. Now I can joint this board. I can joint boards probably, I would guess up to six feet because on the other, the smaller, the three foot one, I could joint them up to about five feet easily. About a foot off of each end and you should be able to push it through your saw safely and easily. Once everything's clamped down, you just, you're gonna put the square edge against your blade the chamfered edge will go against the fence. This is a perfect tapering jig because all you have to do is line up the mark. In other words, the width on each end. If the top of my taper was two inches wide and the bottom was one inch wide, all I do is line up both of those marks on the edge here 
and then just run it through. And you can repeat this over and over and over. You can even make stops to go in these little grooves using the other hardware they have, make it easier to make repeatable cuts. Another thing that's extremely useful about this is now you can have a high fence that'll clamp onto any existing fence. What that's awesome for is if you have to make grooves in the ends of plywood or other panels or raised panels if you wanted to angle that blade and you could use this as extra support vertically. This is perfect for that. It's super strong, it doesn't bend or flex and it clamps to any fence you got. As you can see, this jig will work perfectly fine on a job site saw, a cabinet saw, anything you got. One thing you could do if you wanted to make this super accurate, in other words, not really rely on the fence at all, is put a miter bar or a piece of wood that goes on the, uh, inside the miter slot. You could do that if you didn't want to fool the fence. I found that I like using the fence just as a guide because it makes it fast, simple, and you don't have to worry about trying to get that miter slot lined up or anything like that. On thinner pieces, you'll want to make sure that your clamp is not gonna contact that blade because it can get over that far if you're not careful. Just keep an eye on that, you'll be fine. If you joint shorter boards or you have a job site saw, this four foot version will work on the job site saw. It's really not that unwieldy back here. Just this is easier to handle if you got a, a smaller saw just because of the bed is smaller. Saw how that tips like that. The, the shorter one's not gonna do that as much. So if you have a smaller saw and you don't normally joint long boards, I would really recommend the three footer. And if you're making the three footer, it's the exact same way to make the four footer. You're gonna measure off four inches off each end. Then you'll measure right in the center and then split the center from the four inch. So, so basically you're just gonna divide it in half and then divide it in half again. One other awesome thing you can do with this jig we just built is now we have a way to clamp things to our table. If you got a couple of quick clamps, clamp this to the table. Now we have a way to clamp things up here like this. If we needed to work on this piece of plywood or route into a groove like we did this, and you don't have T-Tracks, this is an excellent, excellent way to do it. This micro jig match fit system is so versatile. I bought this myself and I've enjoyed having it in the shop. I've used it on a ton of projects. I've used it in my previous workbench where I got now got the CNC, but before I was able to clamp things down before I had T-Tracks. And I used it on my crosscut sled and the mobile workbench that I built previously that has a bunch of different clamping options. You gotta check out the crosscut sled build. I'm gonna put that build right there. Click that box right there. You can go watch it, get you a big old virtual fist bump. Also, the mobile workbench build, it's a pretty cool build. You gotta check that out. Using the match fit system, both of those, go check them out.